Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vasaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tanamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvasesha Sunyavari Paskacha Desatarani Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Shidweta Gadara Shivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So Srila Prabhupada's the anniversary of Prabhupada taking sannyas was a few days ago. But I thought, why not? Because it's a valuable subject matter. So Prabhupada takes sannyas, accepting the challenge. And that challenge comes in many forms. It's the challenge of his Guru Maharaj. It's the challenge to... Prabhupada said taking sannyas means to kick on the face of maya. So uh, it's a challenge. Uh, as uh, Ashram Maharaj and I know, and as our Balaram Prabhu will soon know, but it's a glorious challenge. Challenge means stretches the muscles, makes you a better and stronger person. Next. So this is that famous first meeting of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And at that very first meeting, you know the story. Prabhupada is dressed in khadi. Now, to dress in khadi cloth in India during the British Raj was quite a provocative statement because the, the whole principle was um, cotton for Manchester. India's, was, India's job was to be a, sub, uh, a submissive, servile nation and be exploited all to produce raw material and manpower to support the, actually it was the mainstay of the British Empire all over the world. And uh, they would even cut the thumbs off weavers if you tried to make cloth in India. That's the whole of the story. But Prabhupada, uh, but at, at the, the followers of Gandhi for self-sustenance uh, independent nation, uh, they were producing khadi cloth. Uh, khadi cloth means, you know, homespun, domestic cloth. And uh, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a powerful statement. So Prabhupada shows up dressed in khadi cloth and says, uh, 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 you know, and he's talking about Gandhi, who will listen to your message unless we're independent nation. They'll just think that we're, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, of no, nothing worthy of respect. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said it can't wait. The message is so urgent, so the only shortage in this world is the shortage of God consciousness? No. And he told Prabhupada, you're educated. Prabhupada and his friend said, you're educated young men. Go to the West, preach. I was shocked. Prabhupada said, I was shocked and I was so pleased that now the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in good hands. So this um, taking sannyas in, in, uh, was almost synonymous with uh, uh, go to the West. We'll talk about that in a minute. Next. Now, here's a little background. This is Srila Bhakti Santa Saraswati talk, or this is with the British governor of Bengal. And I forget the guy's name at the moment. And he was second unto the viceroy. Very powerful position. Where is he? Here he's with a pit helmet. And what is the caption on this? From Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Western civilization must be crushed. And we'll see why in a moment. But Prabhupada, to go to the West as a servile nation and, and, and stand truth to power and crush Western civilization? Talk about David and Goliath next. Gandhi was asked, uh, there's a famous, which produced absolutely nothing. There was the uh, roundtable discussions, tried how will India, will it be a, a, you know, a self-governed uh, dominion of the British Empire? Will it be an independent nation? Will it be split into Pakistan and Hindustan? So they were all discussing for days and days and days in London. And Gandhi was there. When he first arrived to impress him, uh, London was the capital of the world. And they took him to impress him. Uh, they took him to see the, you know, Westminster Abbey and, and uh, you know, the Buckingham Palace and the 
houses of parliament, huge buildings. And, you know. So they asked him, well, Gandhiji, what do you think of Western civilization? BBC asked him, I went on BBC radio all over the world, what do you think of Western civilization? Gandhi responded, oh, I think it would be a good idea. Prabhupada says Gandhi said some good things, you know. So, and this is, this is here, he's speaking on all India radio. Um, and this is uh, the governor of West Bengal. This is our Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was not, what, Nishringa Guru. There it is. Western civilization must be crushed. Next. So Prabhupada tried, you know, in, in, to do the best he could as a householder, to maintain his family, be a responsible man, and he tried to preach. And uh, Prabhupada narrated that, that he would invite friends and make nice prasadam and have kirtan and some pravachan, some Krishna kata. His wife wouldn't help him at all. Wouldn't help him at all. She'd sit upstairs drinking tea. She actually traded, Prabh Prabhupada told her one time, enough's enough, tea or me. And she, the, I don't know what the time span was, but shortly thereafter, she took Prabhupada's Bhagavatam sets and traded them to purchase tea biscuits, cookies, to go with her tea. On a pound ballot, a pan scale, here's how much the Bhagavatam weight, I'll give you that many uh, uh, tea biscuits. That was it. Prabhupada said, I'm out of here. I can't take it anymore. Have you tried? Next. And he tried to make it work in India. This is, you know, Prabhupada speaking at the, at the uh, League of Devotees in Jhansi. Got a nice building donated, had a, uh, was preaching, it was growing, and was kicked out by the mayor's wife who wanted to start a women's club. So, uh, you know, Prabhupada, here's Prabhupada preaching in tea stalls. He would go in and it's like we do book distribution. Prabhupada was the original book distributor. It was hot in Delhi. Anybody been in Delhi in the summertime? Whoa! You can fry a japati on the sidewalk. It's so hot. Prabhupada one time passed out. He passed out and some gentleman found him. Prabhupada from heat stroke. Prabhupada passed out on the street. Didn't make any, no headway, no headway. Krishna shut this door, that door, this door, that door. What to do? And he could understand. Next. So Srila Prabhupada took sannyas in 1959 from Keshava Maharaj. This is Keshava Maharaj, his god-brother, disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Narayan Maharaj, who presents himself as a god-brother of Srila Prabhupada, is a disciple of Keshava Maharaj. He's not a, a god-brother of Prabhupada. He's a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, of Keshava Maharaj. So Keshava Maharaj gave Prabhupada sannyas. This is Narada Muni sannyas, Maharaj, who was 90 years old when he took sannyas. Devotees asked Prabhupada, at 90 years, did he need to take sannyas? Prabhupada said, better late than never. Sannyas actually is, not to scare anybody here, it, Prabhupada said it's like a fingernail. If you cut it at the right distance, you don't feel anything. You cut it too close, oh, it can be painful. So take sannyas, but our, he, the Pandavas took sannyas, Prahlad Maharaj took sannyas. Taking sannyas at the end of life, uh, that's our tradition. Next. So Srila Prabhupada departed to the West. He thought, all right, I have some books. We'll get there in a minute. I, th I've got my I put this together last night, so my slides are jumbled up. But he had books. He'd taken sannyas. He got his ready to go. So this is Prabhupada's um, little pamphlet he made. He departed to the West August 13, 1965. And I, I don't know if you can see it, but it says, India's message of goodwill and peace. It's about the Bhagavatam. Next. Now what Prabhupada left behind? Wasn't it Prabhupada came to America to see the Statue of, Liz uh, of Liberty or go to Disneyland? You know Prabhupada's observation when he first arrived in New York City? I mean, New York City, Wall Street, Empire State Building, my gosh, Times Square. Prabhupada said the whole place smelled like dog stool. That was Prabhupada's, he was not impressed. And this is what Prabhupada left behind. This is, I mean, this is the Parikram path. 
Now it's all paved and shops and beep, 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 hong, 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 and trash everywhere. But this is the old Parikram path, right, right, right above our Goshala, where our Vrindavan Goshala is. So this is what Prabhupada left behind. I saw it like this, 1973. And uh, this is before that. This is uh, from Yamuna's photos. Next. This is the Parikram path. This is Madan Mohan Temple. This used to be the old course of the Jamuna. You know, imagine how sublime it was. It was all uh, Brindaban Renu, dust of Brindaban. Next. This is another shot of the Parikram path. It's all shops. It's all shops and horns beeping and people houses and neon lights and yeah. This is Brindaban. This is what the Satu see. It's still there if you have the eyes to see. Next. This is the transcendental skyline. This is looking from the other side across at the transcendental skyline of Vrindavan. This is the river Jamuna. This is taken from Madan Mohan. This is the Jamuna. That's the Vrindavan that Prabhupada left. Next. This is looking down the Jamuna at Keshigat. Next. This is uh, Kusum Sarovara where the gopis ostensibly go to pick flowers to worship the sun god. But seriously, but secretly rendezvous with Krishna. This is where Narada Muni took a dip and turned into the form of a gopi, so he could see the Ras dance. I mean, this is a Kusum Sarovara. Next, this is Radha Kund. Next, this is an old picture. You can see 1972 Radha Kund. Anyone's been to Radha Kund? You, you you get harassed mercilessly by the pandas. But this is Radha Kund. Built by Raghunath Das Goswami, his vision. Next. And this is Govardhan Hill, an aerial of Govardhan Hill. This is Krishna showing. Radharani said she wouldn't come, come with Krishna to, this, to you know, descend to, to this earthly planet unless Govardhan Hill came too. Next. And this is Prabhupada's Radha Damodar, where he used to sit and chant Japa. These are the deities of Jiva Goswami, carved by Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami carved Radhadamada. It's just phenomenal. So here, and Prabhupada would sit outside his room on the veranda and chant japa. So this is what Prabhupada left. I had someone tell me, a Gaudiya Mat, that there's many good people in the Gaudiya Mat, don't get me wrong. And we have our fair share of hypocrites and fanatics in ISKCON. But I had someone tell me, a Gaudiya Mat follower, one of their big swamis. Oh, we could have gone to the West, but it was too degraded. Your Swamiji was a householder. He was a businessman. He could mix with these people. I almost snapped, I'm telling you at that point, you know. Oh, he, he, he could mix with these. But we were, you know, we were refined Saraswati Brahmins. We, we could not mix with these people. The fact of the matter is, they could not. They did not have the burning, deep compassion of Srila Prabhupada to come to the West. They did not have the qualification. So this is what Prabhupada left behind to come for us. He took sannyas so he could be empowered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, Prabhupada joked, you know a dunda? You know the nice stick, the nice dunda? After 10 years, you don't have to carry it, so I don't have to carry mine. I think Ashram Marsh is in the same boat. I'll tell you some Dunda stories, funny Dunny story later on. But the um, Prabhupada says, it's a fishing pole. Well, we don't fish. What are we fishing for? What are sannyasis fishing for? <laughs> Reel them right out of the material world. So that's why Prabhupada came. Next. So this is, if you've been to Prabhupada's rooms, <clears throat> you can look out this window, and it drops down, and there's the Bhajan Kutir and the Samadhi of Rupa Goswami. And Prabhupada would sit and meditate. How was he going to go to the West? He didn't have any money. He didn't know anybody. He was not in good health. You know, English was his second language. Had no contacts. Prabhupada could show up at any gentleman's house, at the, at, at, at the president's mansion in Delhi, and he would be welcomed as a sadhu. Forget it. Not that in America. So he was how to do it. 
Next. This is Rupa Goswami. When Prabhupada looked out the window, he would see the samadhi. Ah, Bhajan Kutir. And then the samadhi is this side. Next. And he told him, if you ever get money, you, you, know, you print books. And at the same time, Prabhupada had a recurring dream. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, I heard Prabhupada narrate this story. He'd be sleeping as a householder. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would come to him in his dream. You know how dreams, the dimensions and everything. And, and he would wake. And he would see him standing at the door. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would turn to the door of his bedroom and say, you know, follow me, follow me. Then they'd be at the front of Prabhupada's house. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would turn and say, follow me, follow me. And then they'd go across the courtyard to the gate. And he'd be beckoning, follow me, follow me. And outside the gate was the ocean, Atlantic Ocean. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta would be floating across the ocean, turning to Srila Prabhupada and saying, follow me, follow me. Prabhupada say, in this way he gave me no peace. It was a recurring dream. First time Prabhupada said, take sannyas, go to the West. Prabhupada thought, oh, horrible, difficult. Living with people, that they have cat food in the refrigerator and that crazy LSD drug addict attacked Prabhupada with a knife. I mean, who can imagine? There's a tape, and I, I heard it once and I don't know where, it, I lost it. It's in San Francisco. Prabhupada's giving a talk. He calls for questions. And some lady, could have been a man, don't go gender on me. Uh, this lady stands up and goes, and I suppose you think you're God, and you're screaming at Prabhupada. And you hear Prabhupada say under his breath, it is the darkest of darkness. It is the darkest of darkness. And Prabhupada came to that. So there it is. Next. So, oh, we have a clock. Okay. So, Damada Goswami, coming in the Goswami family, has passed away. But he narrated, and I've got two sources for this. I've got Harisari Prabhu, and I've got Mullah Prakriti's book, that he was a young boy living in the uh, 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 Radhadamadar temple. And he said late at night outside his window, he would hear someone crying. And he would look outside and he would see Prabhupada sweeping at night, late at night, in front of Rupa Goswami Samadhi and crying. And he, he was close to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, old men and young, boy, young children, they're natural allies. So he was friends with, with this little young boy. And he came the next day, or you know, at once some point, and asked Swamiji, why are you crying? Prabhupada said, I am crying because my Guru Maharaj has given me an impossible mission. So he was sweeping and crying in front of the samadhi of Rupa Goswami. How will I go to the West? I've taken sannyas now. I have to go. I've got the Bhagavatam. I've got first canto. I've got to go. This is a, the murti of Srila Rupa Goswami in his, in his um, Bhajan Kutir. Next. So, one night, and if you've been to those Goswami temples, Prabhupada said, they're like a fort, and it's true. You, when, you, when you go into, into the, um, especially Radha Damodar, Radha Shama Sundar, Radha, you, you go into those, Radha Govinda Dev, of course you can't see anymore, but even the new Radha Govinda, I mean, they've got those wood doors that are, I mean, though they're, they're almost, a, you know, they're eight inches thick. Boom! And then they put that big bar, that, they're shut, to, Prabhupada said, tight as a fort. Those old, so because, you know, whatever. So nobody gets in, nobody gets out. And there's some families that live inside the temple. Temple compound, they live inside. The, you know, the door shut, they're walled in like a medieval city. <clears throat> so, Prabhupada's uh, Damara Goswami, he was a boy. I won't tell the whole story. But Damodar Goswami, um, his mother used to send him over sometimes to check with Prabhupada in the evening. She's cooking for her family, you know, an Indian Mataji. She would ask Swamiji, you know, I'm cooking anyway. You want some puri, some rice, some sabji? You want a little hot milk? Can, 
you know, and if if if, if Prabhupada said, oh, "I'll take whatever it was," she would, you know, Damodar, uh, go, uh, Damodar, the child at the time, would bring it over. So he came over one evening. But I heard the source of this is in, is um, well. I'll tell the confirmation first. Hari Sari told me personally that he had heard from different, it was, you know, Vrindavan lore that Prabhupada had the darshan of Rupa Goswami. So, you know, that's pretty far out. So he asked, you know, Prabhupada in the evening when he'd be getting his dry massage in the evening after a full day of service, <clears throat> he would talk sometimes out early days in the Gaudiya Math, and he would talk about his, you know, first coming to the West or his childhood. He, he would reminisce, talk about Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati talk. So one evening when he was in this mood, Hari Sari said, I heard... Um, that you once had the darshan of Rupa Goswami. Prabhupada said, oh, that is common knowledge. And he didn't say anything else. He did not want to talk about it. We talked about it beyond our business card. Prabhupada said, ah, it is common knowledge. He didn't want to talk about it. Some time went by, I don't know, the, you know days, months, weeks, whatever, and same mood, same kind of vibration. Hari Sari Prabhu asked again, Prabhupada said, that you do not require. Prabhupada didn't want to talk about it. But Damodar, he didn't say no, you know. I mean, Prabhupada was a straight arrow. Prabhupada would have said, no, well, that's just Vrindavan law, or you know what, and Prabhupada didn't deny it. He didn't want to talk about it. So Harisari told me when he was doing research work for the Lilamrita, he interviewed Damodar Goswami and got Damodar Goswami told what happened. So one evening, he's sent over by his mother to find out if Swamiji wants any evening prasadam. And he saw Prabhupada all, as they say in Australia, all rugged up. He had his hat and cap. It gets cold, bone-chilling cold in Vrindavan. So Prabhupada's all bundled up. He had a cold. Prabhupada said, no, 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 I'm not. Prabhupada said, uh, how do you get rid There's two things. You, how to get rid of a cold? Prabhupada said, the same way you get rid of an unwanted guest. Don't feed it. It'll go. You don't feed a guest, they're gone. It's passive aggression, how to get rid of a guest. So, you know, in America, they say, feed a fever, starve a cold. So Prabhupada said, no, 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 no. Okay. Late at night, I don't know the hour, but in the wee hours of the evening, late at night, uh, Damodar wakes up and he hears, hears his parents talking and they're looking out the window across the courtyard and they see, you know, underneath the door, a, they see fulgent crack of light is coming out of the door into Prabhupada's room. And Prabhupada's talking to someone. Now all the families were present and accounted for and that door was locked. It wasn't a late evening guest. Who got in and who was Prabhupada speaking to? So Damodar went back to bed, made a vow to find out in the morning. So he scampered over early in the morning and said, Swamiji, and he saw, he, he tells the story, Prabhupada was sitting up straight, no cold, you know, just, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Japa, just ecstatic. So Damodar asked, little boy, asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what he said, Swamiji, Swamiji, who are you talking to? Prabhupada said, I had the darshan of Rupa Goswami. And the little boy, he naturally asked, what did he say? What did he say? Prabhupada said, he told me, you write these books, you go to the West, and we will take care of everything else. So that's Prabhupada's taking sannyas, Prabhupada coming to the West next. So this is the original this is how the Bhagavatams used to look. I have a set of these. These are the original Bhagavatams, printed in Delhi Bhagavatams. And this is the original cover. I remember I got a Bhagavatam set and I read the jacket, the dust jacket, which describes this whole picture, which in the center, of course, it's got the material world, it's got the, the, the Brahma Jyoti, it's got the uh, uh, spiritual world, it's got Goloka Vrindavan, and in Goloka Vrindavan it has Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing. I was in L.A. 
1970, Bhagavatam class, devotee asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I can't decide, like we're qualified. We can barely keep our dhotis on at that point. Prabhupada, I can't decide. When I go back to Godhead, am I going to go to Goloka in sport with Krishna? Or am I, I want, but I love, to, you know, I, I'm attracted to Mahaprabhu's pastimes. I heard it with my own ears, and it's on the cover of the first canto of Bhagavatam. You can look at the new ones, it's still there. Prabhupada said you can go back and forth between Chaitanya Leela and Krishna Leela. You can go back and you don't have to choose. You can be in both. And then Prabhupada said, it can be nighttime and daytime simultaneously in Goloka. We were, Prabhupada said, yes, if I told you everything, you would faint. <laughs> that's the name of the game, buddies. I mean, Prabhus, that's what, that's what we're in for. Snap out of it and get with the program. You know? So Prabhupada said he didn't know if he would finish the, um, the full Bhagavatam. He was, you know, weak health, so many things. He didn't know if he'd finish. So Prabhupada said, I, I put everything you need to know in the first three volumes. First canto was three volumes in those days. Doesn't mean you shouldn't, like Krishna's full, fuller, fuller and fullest. You know, he's full in what? Uh, Dwarka, fuller in Mathura and fullest in Vrindavan. Wrap your mind around that one. Full, fuller, and fullest. So everything we need is in the first canto Bhagavatam, and yet the Bhagavatam expands. But he had the Bhagavatam done, he'd taken sannyas, he had the blessings of Rupa Goswami. Next. And the Bhagavatam, truth to power, meant to bring about a revolution in the impious lives of a misdirected civilization. I mean, just, it's profound. Next. I remember getting a Back to Godhead magazine when I was a guest coming to the temple. And it had a back advertisement for Bhagavad Gita. And it had a picture of all the social and philosophical heroes of the time. It had that rat Skinner. <laughs> it talks about mice and maize. And it's all were just behavioral psychology. It had Ginsburg. It had Tim Leary. It had Socrates. It had all these people on the black and white. In surrounding, and then there was a nice color picture of Prabhupada. And the caption said, all these people may know the questions, only this man knows the answers. It's a great ad. People may know what's wrong, but what do you do about it? So this is Prabhupada in Chippewada. He spent a lot of time in Old Delhi, Chippewada Temple. This is where he did much of his translation work and the printing, and he had to raise money for the books. So this is Prabhupada sitting out, well, you'll see next. This is outside Prabhupada's room in Chippewada. It, was, it has an interior courtyard. So this is, and the sun shines down. So this is Prabhupada. Next. Uh, this is the confirmation. This is his Jaladuta ticket, confirming that he's got passage. And it lists his address, Chippewada in Delhi. Next. This is Iskan Gopal Krishna Maharaj Ki Jai. Is, we now own that property. We don't own it, but we've got a 99-year lease within 99 year more, and we are the uh, custodians of that temple. We got it, and we completely renovated the thing. If you go to it, you should go there. If you sp spend a couple of days in Delhi, smelly Delhi, but it's worth it because you, you can see this is this is where you can see Prabhupada's rooms. Everything's renovated just just exactly as it was. So this is inside the Chippewada Temple. Next, and these are the deities: Shishi Radha Balaba. Prabhupada had darshan. He would come to Anjajapa in the morning, have a morning program there, and go about his business. Next. This is just gives you an example, navigating the lanes in Chippewada. Tiny, tiny. You can't get a car in there. Even today, you, you don't have, they don't allow cars. And it's all hand pull. What do, they, what do you call those things? Changa. A changa? What do they call? Not the changa. That's what you're thrown off of. Anyway. Changa. Is that right? But, Tonga, they're, yeah, they're all hand-pulled tongas, hand-pulled, you know, with stacks of paper and tin and all kinds of stuff. And this is uh, an old, this is the Sharma Press. It's, you can't find it anymore, but I, we got a nice snap of the Sharma Press, my early days in Delhi. Next. So now Prabhupada, as he's getting ready to go, he visited Shantipur a few days before his departure. Ah, here it is. And Shantipur, of course, is the... Um, place of Advaita Charya. 
And it's significant because Lord Nityananda, it's significant for so many reasons, but it's significant because Advaita Charya and Lord Nityananda used to meet there and make strategy for how to spread the Sankatan movement. So Prabhupada is strategizing how to go to the West, how to, you know, pierce like, like Hanuman, how to pierce the citadel of Ram, I mean of, of Ravana. So he went there for their blessings. Now Prabhupada used to visit as a young man. Well, here's the backstory. The backstory told by uh, Jai, uh, His Holiest Jaya Pataka Maharaj that on Prabhupada's Vyas Puja Day, I don't know the year, but not so long ago, 1990s, maybe 2000, something, maybe 2010, the Mahant, now the Mahants are the family line that maintains the temple for generations, uh, for the Shantipur, Dwaita Charya Bhavan, uh, showed up at the Vyas Puja. And he'd come because the devotees had visited Shantipur and shown him a Back to Godhead magazine. Western devotees, Back to Godhead magazine, pictures of temples around the world. And the man exclaimed, the Mahant, he did it! He did it! Now what he was talking, and he came and told that story at Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja, confirmed by Jayapataka Maharaj. So this, as a young man, he was doing puja at Shanti Bhavan. He got to know Prabhupada. Then Prabhupada moved to Alabat, so many things, and didn't see him. Many years later, Prabhupada went to visit. Now as a sannyasi, an old man, stealing himself for the trip to, to America. And the young priest came around, or whatever age he was, came around, and he saw this old sannyasi chanting japa and crying. So he went to, you know, devotees are, you know, to console the men and looked, he said, Abai Babu? And Prabhupada said, Sanyasi said, yes. They were old friends. They, they recognized him. And he said, why are you crying? He said, I am the unworthy disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And he has given me an impossible mission. Next. Here it is. And Prabhupada also went to the Samadhi of his Guru Maharaj in Mayapur, praying and crying, the power of a Vaishnava's tears. They are not a light thing. The dust of a, the holy Tirtas, the dust of the Acharyas, the dust of a Vaishnava, and powerful, uh, are powerful substances combined with the dust of a Vaishnava's tears. And cry, tears. Oh, okay, next. Prabhupada said, was a lone fighter. This is the Jaladuta in, in dry dock, but there's Prabhupada going up the gang, gangplank. Next. You know what he had in a suitcase? What was one of the supplies Prabhupada took with him? Flat rice. Huh? Flat rice. Flat rice, but something else. Oats. Oats. He, th he didn't know if he could get rice. He didn't know what he could get to eat. Well, he would live on, and we, <laughs> you know our opinion of oats. So Prabhupada took some dried oats. If he will, at least he'll have something to eat. Because he thought, well, he'll do his best and see what happens in a month or two. Okay, now this is Victoria Memorial. It's 184 feet. Uh, it's over 15 stories. You have a picture of it there. It's a, made in honor of Queen Victoria. It's, it's a British knockoff on the uh, um, Taj Mahal. It was meant to impress the colonial, the subservient Brit, uh, Indians of the power of the British Empire, at the height of Queen Victoria's reign in the British Raj, it was built. It's on the bank of the Ganga, the Hulgi River, a branch of the Ganga. Prabhupada, as a young boy, climbed to the very top of the scaffolding. And you see, see that bamboo scaffolding? They use it a lot in, you know, developing worlds. Instead of steel, they lash it together, they'll take it apart. I mean, that stuff creaks, it sways in the wind. Prabhupada climbed all the way to the top. You can hear it on a morning walk. And in Cross Madan, you look for a lecture, Calcutta, Cross Madan. And they say to Prabhupada, um, oh, Prabhupada saw it. It's a nice park. It's, and uh, Prabhupada mentioned that he'd climbed to the top as a boy. 
And uh, they said, Prabhupada, you must have been very brave. Prabhupada said, and I'm still brave. Otherwise, how have I come to your country all alone? So Prabhupada was a brave fighter. Next. 69 years old, all alone, 38 d days at sea. Suitcase, umbrella, supply of dry cereal, several trunks of books, and 40 rupees, $8. Two heart attacks, 12,500 12, miles by sea. Anybody ever get seasick? I've been seasick. You ever been seasick? Oh, it is nasty, isn't it, Joseph? It is nasty. Yeah, it's where you throw up, you can't stand up. It's really nasty. Probably he got seasick. Next. And what happened, Prabhupada said, he had a dream, a vision, that Krishna and all his incarnations took charge of the Jaladuta, and he had a smooth sailing. Joking and half-meaning it, the captain's wife asked Prabhupada to come back with him because the captain himself, Captain Panda, said he'd never experienced such a smooth crossing of the Atlantic. Prabhupada got sick coming up the Red Sea and through the Mediterranean and the beginning of the Atlantic. Next. So this is Prabhupada in Boston. I heard Prabhupada say this. He was standing on the boat. They first docked in Boston Harbor. A foggy Boston. And Prabhupada was looking at the skyline, the wharf line, you know, and how will these people, Prabhupada said, they took him for a walk. The Captain Panta took Prabhupada for a walk. Prabhupada said, everywhere you smell lobster soup. Prabhupada said, we can make cauliflower wet vegetable with paneer, fried paneer. And, and the Prabhupada said, that will kick out this lobster soup nonsense. <laughs> oh, glories to Prabhupada. So he got his first glimpse like Hanuman looking at the walls of Ravana at Lanka. You know, this is not, you know, he has that wonderful poem Prabhupada wrote. And he'd been told, oh, you got to wear pants, you're going to have to eat meat, you're going to have to learn to eat with a knife and fork. So Prabhupada was praying, what, give me a sign, what do I, and Prabhupada said, just as he was praying like that, the fog cleared, do I mix, do I water down, do, what do I do? You know, the Gaudiya Math, funded by Sri uh, Bhaktisiddhanta uh, Saraswati Thakur, or Ban Maharaj, failed miserably. They asked, they asked Prabhupada, why did you come to America? Prabhupada said, well, one of my god brothers went to Sweden and he failed. None of my god brothers went to Germany and he failed. Some of my god brothers went to London and they failed. I thought, well, if I'm going to fail, let me fail in a new place. Prabhupada actually knew if he could turn America, he could turn the world. And it worked. That was Prabhupada's strategy. He turned, and then once he turned America, he got some Western Vaishnavas. He brought them back to India as dancing white elephants. And the Indians started thinking, wait a minute, maybe there's something in there, our culture. Maybe we're not just second class. Maybe the Vedas are something. And he turned India. It's, it's inconceivable. So Prabhupada was sitting on the deck praying like this, how do I water it down? What do I do? And the fog cleared, and there was a signboard on a factory. It said, unalloyed steel. Prabhupada said, all right, I'm not watering it down. I'm giving it to him as it is. Next. So from that line in the poetry, I'm a most unfortunate, unqualified, and most fallen. Therefore, I'm seeking your benediction so that I can convince them, for I am powerless to do so on my own. This is the uh, Boston, this is, this is the immigration center. This is immigration hall. This is the building Prabhupada came through and got his form stamped. They asked him, how, do you, how long do you want? Prabhupada said, well, maybe a month. Boom, they stamped it three months. They gave him three months extra. Uh, total three months. Next. So, of course, we know Prabhupada went to Butler, Pennsylvania. I couldn't get a picture of, 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 Bet of uh, Sally, but look at this. Look at the cars. This is Butler, Pennsylvania. And Prabhupada said he was staying at the YMCA. He'd come to bathe and to cook because there was no kitchen or no bathroom. He would say, you know, just a room at the YMCA. And sometimes she'd have beef roasting in the oven. And Prabhupada said she'd flat, open the kitchen door, flap her apron, Swami, sorry, Swami, sorry, Swami. Just imagine, man, so here she is, you know, a representative of Sally with her roast beef in the oven. Next. This is the, um, this is the postcard. Butler, Pennsylvania, 
home of the Jeep. It's famous for making the Jeep, you know, World War II. And let me tell you, America, if you weren't white, Christian, male in America, you talk about MAGA now, make America great. I mean, you didn't count. If you were Catholic, they were suspicious of you. You had to be a wasp, white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant. Big signs, Irish need not apply, you know, in the early days in Boston. And here's Prabhupada in Butler, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Next. It's just amazing. This is Prabhupada's walk, his daily walk to Dr. Mishra's apartment. Let's look at Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, they asked him, is there a heaven or a hell in India? Uh, a, he a heaven or a hell in your theology? Prabhupada said, for me, in India, the sun is always shining. He was in London to the BBC, punched right in the nose, truth to power, to the BBC. Do you have a heaven and a hell? Prabhupada said, well, in India, the sun is always shining. And in London, it is always cold and rainy. He said, for me, uh, uh, India is heaven and London is hell. And the BBC headline, I don't know on what page it says, Swami says, London is hell. Mukundamar told me that. It's blissful, huh? But Prabhupada did not like cold weather. But for us, look at him. He's all trundled up. He's got long johns. He's got somebody, somebody got this coat. He's got a swami cap. And he walked. This is the way Prabhupada walked in the snow. It was the worst blizzard. Don't think, oh, I'm a surrendered devotee. Why doesn't Krishna make it easy for me? Krishna's got his way of doing things. So, um, it was the worst blizzard on record when Prabhupada arrived. Next. So, Abhay Charande means fearless at the lotus feet. This is the old, they moved, I don't know, they moved next door, but this said moved to 26th Second Avenue. But I love the look on Prabhupada's face. Stranger in a strange land. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I'm adventure. And Prabhupada's right on the cutting edge of adventure. I remember thinking I was a young man. I loved reading National Geographic. I already had my first four world tours planned. My father was going to pay for it if I got good grades in college. I knew where I was going. And I gave it all up. <laughs> Krishna saved me. It's the truth. And, and I, I'm living in an ashram. I want to see the world. And I remember reading in Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, in the opulence of the absolute, and I am adventure. And I concluded by super soul within the heart, no, you just surrender to Krishna. You'll see the world. You'll have. I've had adventures that all of you have. You got the guy who grows up and takes over his father's hardware store, marries his high school girlfriend, and never been outside the... George Bush, until he was elected president, had never left the United States. Moron. Whoop. <laughs> so sorry about that. I mean, I was in Boston. That, that's the, that's the, the junior, junior. Oh, and here's Prabhupada for Krishna. What adventure will Krishna send today? Next. And here's his first American Vaishnavas. We could name them all, but we don't have time. This is big Brahmananda. Jai Dwaitamaj is in this picture. On the right. This is Jai Dwaitamaj. No, here's Jai Dwaitamaj. Is this him? Oh, that's Madhu. And this is Jai. That was a transcendental accident. Okay, next. And of course, we know all the famous picture speaking under the elm tree in Thompson Square Park. Save Earth Now, next. Now, we've fast forwarded to San Francisco because I want to tell a story. Now, this is Prabhupada. This is Jayananda in a suit and tie. Check it out for Bhagavatam class. This is the Ratha Yatra. This is their pulling. This is, the, you know, this is, they borrowed a truck. And then they had Shama Sundar's truck with Lord Jagannath on the back. And his dog, Sam, I think was the dog's name, in the front seat. Can you imagine? Actually, I think this is Shama Sundar now that I look at it. But anyway. Um, I mean, what a crew. Mahatma said, second or third time, this is when Tamal Krishnamarsh had made all those devotees. And the temple room was full of brahmacharis from the Radhadamadar party. Mahatma told me that when Prabhupada, on Frederick Street in San Francisco, Prabhupada stopped 
before coming into the temple and closed his eyes in meditation. And then when he came in and sat down, Prabhupada did not chant Jai Radha Madhava, which he usually did, but he chanted the samsara prayers. And later on, they asked Prabhupada, why did you do that? Why did you pause? And why no Jai Radha Madhava? Why, why the samsara? Prabhupada said, I prayed to the, uh, my, the previous acharyas to just come and see the fun. He prayed, Rupa Goswami, all of our priests, his spiritual master, just come, come and see. It's working. Western Vaishnavas. Next. So you can just hippie hill, you can just see. And why was Prabhupada successful? Oh, he was a businessman, householder. He could mix with these people. Whoa, makes your blood boil. It was because it confirmed, by to, to, on the other side of the coin, the senior Puri Maharaj from Vishakapatnam, a fantastic vice, he's passed away now. He said Prabhupada's qualification was that he had boundless compassion, unlimited compassion in the mood of Lord Nityananda, and he had complete faith in the power of the holy name. Just get him to chant. Just get him, somehow or other, get him to chant. That's what Prabhupada's qualification was. And they did not have it. Next. So when Prabhupada returned, every devotee, just like you should read Origins magazine every now and then, brush up on it, you should read it. Every devotee should listen to Prabhupada's lectures uh, at Radha Damodar Temple on the Upadesha Amrita. They're just so fantastic. It's just, and Prabhupada, Prabhupada has gone to the West. Rupa Goswami said, you go. We'll take care of you. Just write these books and go. At personal peril and austerity, he goes and he fights, 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 fights. No success for the first year. Sitting alone, preaching to the wall, his typewriter stolen. Bhagavad Gita manuscripts stolen. Starts all over again. And finally, he shows them it's working. And then he brings some Western devotees back. He's sitting. You, this is Rupa Goswami's samadhi. He's sitting at the feet of Rupa Goswami sh with his disciples. It worked. Here's the fruit of your blessings. And he's speaking from Rupa Goswami's Upadesha Amrita. You talk about a mystical moment. The full arc of history. Next. What happened here? Oh, this picture blanked out. This is Prabhupada going down New York City, down uh, Times Square. You know, there's that wonderful picture. Prabhupada said that it was the most important. Prabhupada used to wander penniless. He would go and see if his books were checked out from the library, the Bhagavatam, and he was happy people were checking it out. He'd go down and find out when, when he was really despondent. This is so difficult. He, he would, it's a famous story. Mr. Forrester was interviewed for the Lila Marita. He was the clerk, the, the shipping clerk at the Cynthia Shipping Lines in New York. Prabhupada would come down there sometimes and find out when the next ship going back to India was. So he, he, Mr. Forrester said, you come, but you never book passage. He had free passage back, but you, never, you don't book passage. Prabhupada said, I know, but I get satisfaction knowing I could go. It was not easy. So from a penniless pauper, then he's sailing down Fifth Avenue, the most important street of the most important city in the most important country in the world at that time. And it was. In the 70s, America was the master of the world. Next. So just the power of faith in the holy name and the order and spiritual master and a pure heart. So, of course, we know the, we're almost done. This is the L.A. Ratha Yatra and countless cities around the world. Just inconceivable. Next. Now, and this is the, like, the esoteric principle of taking sannyā, bhajananandi and goshtananandi. Let me go to Radhakun. We were talking about the other day and find out what my siddhade is and, and I'm a peacock and lock myself in a room and my copan's in meow, meow try to f follow Raghunath Das Goswami with no qualification. Prabhupada said, you will not find Krishna in a bush in Vrindavan. 
So, but, but Vrindavan Bhajan, and it's deeply described by our previous acharyas, what is the esoteric meaning of all of this? Well, Prabhupada gives the purport. So from his Vrindavan Bhajan poem, by performance of such sankirtan, there will come remembrance automatically, and then there will be nirjana bhajana manifested in the heart spontaneously. Nirjana bhajana is to, is to study the books, especially the book by um, uh, Kavikanapur, the different daily pastimes of, of, the, of the Radha and Krishna, and to become absorbed in meditation on the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, uh, that's nirjana bhajana to the point of no eating and sleeping. Just absorbed. That's how, that's how Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur left his body. He left his body, Prabhupada said, in Kopa Samadhi, in Nirjana Bhajana, meditating on the pastimes of Radha Krishna. They didn't even know when he'd left his body. He'd stopped eating. They'd just put a charter on him at night and take it off during the daytime. And finally they realized he stopped breathing. That's how Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur left his body. Wow! Don't tell me we don't know of these things in our line. Don't tell me it's not in our line. But you've got to get the Adhikari. And so he's talking about Nirjan Bhajan by performance of Sankirtan. I, don't, I haven't given you the whole poem. By going out and being merciful and giving books and prashadam and the holy name to the conditioned soul. You're not going to find it by becoming a Sanskrit scholar and being a neo smarta Brahmin. It's not going to happen. You dedicate yourself to Mahaprabhu's mission and you deliver the conditioned souls. And what does Prabhupada say? Look it up automatically, spontaneously. It is not proper for Vaishnavas to remain uncompassionate. Vishnu Chakravati Thakur saying, Madhurya Kandambini, look at the conclusion and see what his judgment, see his judgment. Now we know Vishnu Chakravati Thakur following the Goswamis on the highest level of Madhurya Ras. And in his Madhurya Kandambini, talking about the secret of obtaining Nirjan Bhajan, he says, by being, by distributing the mercy of Mahaprabhu. That's the key, the secret ingredient that opens the door to Nirjana Bhajana. Chew on that, Prabhus. Next. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha Krishna combined. You want to meditate on Radha Krishna's pastimes? They combine to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what? Okay, little simple algebra. Radha and Krishna, Nirjan Bhajan, meditate on their pastimes. Now Radha and Krishna become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So meditate on whose pastimes? Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Radha and Krishna, Nirjan Bhajan, meditate on Radha and Krishna's pastimes. That doesn't mean you don't meditate on Radha Krishna Pasa. Don't get me wrong. So Radha and Krishna become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One. And you meditate on Chaitanya. You become absorbed in carrying out the pastimes of Mahaprabhu. And you'll obtain Nirjana Bhajan. And all the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna will be revealed within your heart. Automatically, spontaneously. When you have the Adhikari or qualification. Next. So meditating and serving on the Sankatan mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We mentioned this last time. I love this pastime. Here we are in Krishna Leela. Here we are in Mahaprabhu Leela. It is the same. Next. So Prabhupada said, we got two or three slides and we'll be done. Uh, Prabhupada said, my disease is I cannot think small. I heard him say it. We are not meant for small things. We're not meant to just drag ourselves to Walmart and back and hope we have all the teeth in our head and enough of a pension to squeak by. You can't even get a pension now. Hopefully you saved enough in your IRA and the government hasn't rated it with taxes and inflation and you can just eek. Little grannies over there cutting their pills in half. It's horrible. It's a beastly society. And you just started, you know, waiting for the, do not go gently into that long good night, but rage, rage, rage against the dimming of the light. Try to squeak back, Botox, dye your hair, until the wrecking ball comes through the window and they drag you off like an old goat. Jai. That's, <laughs> that's what life is meant for? That's it? Forget. And then you go through the whole damn thing. Whoop, the whole darn thing again? Whoa. 
Talk about hell. But Prabhupada, our, our movement is, Prabhupada's, Prabhupada saw the Capitol building in, Los, in, in L.A., I mean in, in Washington, D.C. He saw the Capitol building. Prabhupada said, oh, they should install Radhakrishna, put a chakra on top of it, make it a temple. Prabhupada could not think small. And therefore, this, we should not, uh, you know, we should be like Jayananda. You know, we're practical, but we think big. Okay, and this is, Prabhupada saw this sign outside a hardware store. This is Sherwin-Williams paint. This is their advertisement. Their logo is, we cover the world, you know, with covering it with paint. Prabhupada said, this is Mahaprabhu's movement. Every town and village, we cover the world. Don't worry, there's a few left. There's people out there who haven't gotten Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada said, we should not rest till every house has a set of Bhagavatams in it. We used to be, Vaisheshe Kaprabhu Kijai, we used to be like the Gaudiamat thinking, every town and village, but it'll never happen. How will it, it used to be a mystery to the Gaudiamat that how will every town and village, Mahaprabhu's word and message will be heard? Oh, how? It's there in Shastra, we accept. But how? Prabhupada says every gentle person will have a set of Bhagavatams in their house. We thought, whoa, okay. It's happening right before our eyes. Tens of thousands of sets. We're selling sets of Bhagavatams on Sankirtan. I'm telling you, this is a mystical movement to the core. Okay, my disease is I cannot think small. Next. So this is it. Considering all that Srila Prabhupada did for us, all that he went to, this is one of those uh, Vaisheshika sutras, the attitude of gratitude. We should, be, we should meditate on what Prabhupada went through, what his taking sannyas meant, what this movement is giving to the world and giving to us, and our, we should have an attitude of gratitude. If you receive something and you don't give back, that's a miser. But you receive and you give back, that's the attitude of gratitude. So we can end there, Prabhu. Thank you very much. All glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. And someone can get the lights. <laughs>